What's up, Wokers? This podcast is with my primal therapy teacher, the wonderful Pooja Lep. This woman's course totally changed my life. So if you if you recognize that you're damaged from being born on this planet, from being born to damaged parents, and you really want to do the work and heal yourself so you can fully love and enjoy your existence on the planet, you should probably listen to this one. It was a blast. Check it out and see you in the next one. Are you ready to get woke? Welcome to the Woke as F**k podcast with your host, Alex Lazarev. All right. So, very special guest today, the wonderful Pooja Lep. Um, almost a bit strange because in all the years I've been doing podcasting and all this kind of stuff, I never thought I would get, uh, you know, I don't even know, are you a, technically a psychotherapist or a psychologist? Uh, psychotherapist, psychotherapist, but a non-medical psychotherapist. Okay. Um, I never thought I'd have one on any show because I've never, from my personal experience in life, I never really thought that shit worked. <laughs> and, uh, and okay. there's a reason for that is because most of them don't accomplish anything <laughs> with their, with their clients. Um, so after going through, through your course, my reality of just what can happen with, you know, at least what you're doing has been completely shattered. Yes, and it's forced, yeah. it's forced me to really, uh, to realize that their profound work and changes can happen through this type of, you know, training, uh, mm -hmm. psychotherapy. So, so, so I can only say it's a massive pleasure to be, to be talking to you. Okay. Um, yes. But I don't even know where to begin, frankly, because the, the, the experience I had on the course was so profound and transformational. I don't even know if we can, yes. if we can put well, it across to people. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe, you know, I start a little bit how I got into that line of work. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. You know how it all started for me. Cause you know, that's always the best thing to bring across. Right. So, you know, um, it was like during the late seventies and early eighties. Oh my God, that sounds I'm very old. I was, <laughs> well, you don't look it, but I mean, that it's helps. It's true, but it's true. I have already lots of mileage, you could say. So during the early 80s, you know, I was studying social psychology in Germany. And then already during my studies, you know, it became too clear to me, like rather fast, that I was much more interested in psychological health rather than, you know, having to deal with severe personality disorders in mentally sick people. So I felt then so much more drawn to the concept of humanistic psychology, which is um, a much more holistic approach, you know, that claims that actually a human being can develop their true potential and actually experience a life with happiness and creativity and emotional and spiritual fulfillment so um, therefore I became part of what was called the human potential movement which um, actually started in the US in the late 60s and was something you could say um, like a counter-cultural rebellion against you know the mainstream psychology and organized uh, religion Mm -hmm. So, um, so during my studies, then I started to participate in humanistic individual and group therapy, like, you know, encounter workshops, where you basically, um, you know, kind of through emotional sharing and confrontation, you, you know, you basically look into self awareness, and then also gestalt therapy, and then primary therapy, which actually then became my passion until today. So um, then, of course, that uh, wasn't long before then the spiritual path beckoned kind of strongly when my journey then led me to India in 1981. You know, it was also the time when all young Western seekers they travel to the east in the hope to find you know spirituality and meditation so i was one of them and then basically met the you could say the con contemporary indian music called osho and uh, of course that oh, that changed my life big time because then already at that time 
you know, many therapists from actually coming from all over the world who were trained in Western methods of psychotherapy, they already gathered around this, what you could call a controversial mystic and explored Eastern methods of meditation. So, um, uh, you know, this gave birth to a complete unique experiment, you could say, because um, maybe for the first time in, in history even, you know, like Western psychotherapy and Eastern mysticism shook hands, you could say. And with Osho's guidance, we developed many new ways of working with people, you know, looking at the uh, human psyche from a much broader viewpoint. And, you know, what was also very unique, you know, me, let's say, as the primary therapist, um, I would act as the guide and be in a position of authority during a retreat, yeah? But then in the wider context of being a spiritual seeker, you know, there was much more a sense of oneness with your clients because, um, you know, we would be learning and experiencing meditation together by living in a spiritual community, being around an enlightened mystic. So that was different, you know, you wouldn't have this strong separation between the therapist and the client, right? So in... I mean, I then spent many years, you know, probably more than 20 years in what was called the world's largest spiritual growth center and really studying uh, the ancient art of meditation, but then, you know, combining it with um, what you could call cutting edge psychotherapy. And just this combination of therapy and meditation, you know, that was just a very new and unique combination. And I have seen really big transformation happening for people, you know, through the years. Well, I can attest to that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you no, know, like nowadays, of course, um, I also moved on and I work on my own, you know, without being now uh, connected to a specific community or organization. Mm. But those years really, really left a deep, deep imprint on me. And I just call myself very uh, fortunate to be, you know, that I have been able already at such a young age, you know, to be around an enlightened mystic and really learn. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty rare, it's a pretty unique situation, um, and I think yes. that's that that might be one of the things that holds back um, most people in sort of in the West from achieving their full potential in whatever field they're in, because we're so indoctrinated into you know um, what you can see in the very scientific way. You know, if you can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't hold it, it's not real. So a lot of these people doing work, you know, like you're doing, like, like psychotherapists, doctors, whatever. There isn't yes. a spiritual element to it at all. And how can you work with human beings when we are spiritual beings having a human experience without having that element? I don't, I, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, and, but in those you know, days, you know, in those days, it, it, it didn't come together. You know, there was the psychotherapy, which was much more focusing on, you know, really em emotionally troubled people. Hmm. They didn't work with what I call, you know, like uh, the normal neurotics like you and me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just more interested also on in self-awareness and self-actualization. So I guess what I want to sort of ask first is, I think most people have no idea really what even primal is. So if you had to sort of give a, a brief description, what is primal therapy? Yes. Yes. You know, one, I mean, I think you asked me already before, you know, why are we so fucked up since birth, right? That is a big question. It's, it's high yes. up on my list because yes. everybody yes. is really fucked up. Yes, yes. I mean, that's a good question. Also, um, you know, I would reframe it a bit more to um, why are we actually carrying so many hangups from childhood, right? Mm. Which then don't allow us to live our full potential as an adult. You know, I think I really haven't met hardly anybody who's not carrying blockages of pain from childhood from birth on, you know, like unresolved childhood conflicts that are then just repeated through our lives. So I think even with, you know, with the best parents, um, 
of course, there is not such a thing as perfect parents. You know, we do carry baggage, you know, just like um, just the fact that as children, we are so dependent on the parents, you know, creates so many issues for us. And, you know, I mean, we all got raised by parents who weren't enlightened, right? I mean, at least my parents weren't enlightened. Of course, they tried to do their best. Mm. But uh, often, you know, our parents, I mean, they have been wounded themselves. And they just passed on a lot of their own unresolved stuff from their childhoods. You know, sometimes even with the best intentions. It's actually only now, you know, like the latest neuroscience, they actually claim that trauma is passed down from one generation to the next and, you know, therefore may have a genetic impact on a person's future children. So the only way, you know, to work through unresolved issues, you know, of anger, fear, grief, shame, shame in yourself, you know, you have to work it through in yourself and therefore help to heal also future generations like your kids, you know. I think that's the only way. And, uh, you know, to work through childhood issues, uh, of course, this takes time. It's not a quick fix, you know. Whenever somebody offers you a quick fix, I think it's just not possible, you know. It's like nobody can swing a magic wand, you know, and offer you a shortcut. But what you can offer, you know, you can offer to people like something like a roadmap for healing. And I always say, you know, it's a long road towards healing, long road. And but then each time, you know, you let yourself feel one of these repressed feelings you might have not been able to express as a child and really be there. You know, the healing work takes place for your inner child. So that's why, you know, um, this deep feeling work, what primal is, is so crucial. And, you know, in a nutshell, primal therapy is um, you let yourself feel the pain and the feelings of the unmet needs as a child. Yep. Yep. And um, I can only add that. Um... You know, and the key, sorry, and the key, you know, is also, you know, um, you have to let go of all ego defenses, which you had to develop during your childhood. Often a way, you know, to... Uh, deal with a dysfunction in the family. So all these ego defenses, you know, they're just like survival patterns from childhood. And um, I think one of the reasons actually why people are often stuck in the past and therefore repeating painful situations over and over is, you know, some people, some of my clients say, I, I mean, what's past is in the past. Why should I bother, right? I think that's such an illusion because I think the past is here now in the patterns that keep you stuck in your life or makes you holding on to toxic relationships or not for really going what you want in life, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was sort of uh, starting to clue into some of my patterns, you know, on my own, but on the course, it just became so clear, like, you know, what yes. I got from my mother, what I got from my father, yes. just so in your face, you can't, you yes. can't, and you just have to deal with it and you have to get it out of your yes. system. And yes. uh, once you really start getting it out, getting those emotions out and deal, deal, just dealing with it instead of suppressing it, it feels good, man. It's like yes. you open up like a Pandora's box and suddenly next thing you know, it's just all coming out. And you, it, by the end of the course, I just felt empty like I just oh it's like I it's like I'd been drained of all so much shit I'd been holding in and I just had room in my heart to actually breathe and, and to feel yes. I mean I really yes. felt I could feel for the first time in in fucking years it's unbelievable yes. you know and we as human being we are feeling beings yeah so um um you know that's why it's so crucial to come in terms with your past you know like and uh you know, we learn everything from our parents, right? Mother is the first because you just uh, said, you know, how much you had taken in from your parents. You know, your mother is the first role model how women are, right? And your father is the first role model of how men are, you know? And in that way, you learn everything from them. 
So their beliefs, you know, become your beliefs. Their way of living becomes your way of living. Yeah, yeah. We're just we're so trapped and so helpless. You know, yes. we, have, we have no choice. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You know, and um, I make a very big difference. Uh, I make a very big difference between you know personality and individuality. Remember that day when I was teaching the different layers, right? So, you know, the, actually, you know, personality and often we are so identified with our personality or we say, oh my God, this person has a real cool personality. But actually, you know, the word personality, it comes from the Greek word persona, which just means actually wearing a mask, you know, and it was used in ancient Greek theater, like wearing a mask means the real face is not seen, right? And individuality in my understanding is you know um your authentic being uh who you really are and have always been throughout all time you know what makes you unique with your very specific merits so it's not given to you by anyone it's actually inherently yours and so the journey in prime you could also see you know it's a journey from uh, personality to individuality. So it's not that we just, you know, try to optimize your personality. You know, once I asked actually Osho, you know, what's the difference uh, or should I put energy, you know, the question was, should I put energy into improving my personality? Yeah. And I think it was very naive that I asked that questions <laughs> because basically what he said is, you know, are you your own worst enemy, you know? Why would you basically put energy into, you know, improving your personality? You want to use all your energy in destroying your personality, become the real you. So that stayed with me forever, right? So in, you know, in the work, I really support people to drop the mass of their personality, which is just given by pants and... Uh, environment you actually grew up in and to really uh, uncover the real self and you know um, again you know this 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 defense mechanism which do create that personality they really without a doubt these defenses were needed to support your growth from childhood into adulthood right and they served a purpose but then, however, as an adult, you know, these defenses become really limiting and, you know, arrest really further growth and flowering into a, becoming an independent individual who is free from constraints of the, mm -hmm. you know, limiting behavior and beliefs you learned in the past. So that's the journey, you know, from the personality to the individuality. I mean, and, I, yes, sorry. No, no, go on. You finish your sentence and I'll, I'll add to it. Um, you know, and uh, you must have experienced it during the um, course you just did, you know, like experiencing people letting down their defenses, everybody somehow becomes beautiful and lovable, right? Dude, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, oh my God, I have never seen so yeah. many beautiful souls in my life because everyone was yes. opening up and I could, uh, the yes. changes I saw through that course, I mean, I won't name names, but one guy came in, you know, he was so stiff and in his head and quiet and I could see he was a bitch and he'd just been destroyed by everyone in life and he'd never stood up for oh, himself. So you. Well, that, well, no, no, I had a different story, which I'm happy to share. I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, no, well, you, for a German, I don't, you make a lot of jokes, let's just say. Um... <laughs> But you but know, this the Germans <laughs> twice after a show. You know, first out of basically being polite and we didn't get it, and then in the middle of the night. Then we get it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um but 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 anyway, but and then this guy just he just got rid of all of the shit and at the end he was so open and funny and yes. just I could see his being shining through and I was like, This guy's awesome. And he wasn't, yes. he was super anal and <laughs> at the beginning, different person completely. So, yeah. so, so we're all not being ourselves. And, you know, even like my personal experience was so profound. And, and it's funny when you're talking now about 
um, you know, that, that ego personality, I had developed over my life huge, huge ego uh, personalities that served me very well. One being a comedian. Yes. Oh, I'm a comedian. I'm so funny. And that was my way of relating and making people like me. That was in my 20s. And in my 30s as a, as a, a character I essentially created called Sasha Day Game, where I'm this larger than life character, very funny. I do crazy things and whatever. And it's, it's, it served me really well. But now as I'm processing all this and just getting more and more in touch with the the, the deeper inner uh, me, I don't even feel comfortable putting on those personas. I, I, it's hard for me to even yes. re- relate to it because I, I'm just I'm just me and I, I don't need to be funny. I don't need to do anything. I'm just happy sitting around being myself and in the moments. So it's hard almost for me to, because I'm so used to being funny and being the center of attention. I'm trying to yes. see now and, and sort of... Uh, find where is the point where it really is coming from me, me inside where I really right. feel that inspiration to be funny. And I am a funny guy. And when am I doing it as part of that ego defense? So people will like exactly. me and, and give me love. So, so I'm really changing and people are in my videos I put up online. A lot of people are saying, dude, you're so much more relaxed and chilled out. We love the new Sasha. This is amazing because they see it because I'm not, I don't have to put on a show anymore. I'm just more content being in the, in the yes. beingness. That's me. It's, yes. it's very profound. And still, maybe, you know, one of your merits is, you know, that you can uh, actually entertain people. Nothing wrong with that, you know. And there are, of course, also moments where maybe it's not a good idea to let down your defenses, you know, and stay in that personality. But uh, at the end of the day, of course, uh, living through the layers of your personality, I mean, it will never uh, bring you the fulfillment and the love you're longing for. Because, you know, it's a little bit like uh, living in defenses, in wide defenses in the other person. So, um, you know, to see people then actually claiming their power back, you know, once they uh, dare to let down their, their defenses, you know, their, their personality, this is ever so rewarding to me, you know. In that way, I, you know, I consider myself as very fortunate to be able to support these people, support basically a person, you know, on this journey. I think it's the best job in the world I got. It, it's, it's amazing. It really you know? is amazing. And, and you know, as we all have parents, we all have issues, right? So therefore, I also never run out of work. <laughs> no, never, never. Well, two things never, I, I want to say never. briefly. The first being that, um, yeah, when I was on the the course and I was realizing how profound it was, and even on day three, day four, when I was starting to open up and really see what was going on and let some emotions out, I was thinking. Wow, I want to be doing this. Fuck what I'm doing. <laughs> this is way more profound than what I'm doing. Yes, you know, because it, it yeah. almost seems like what I've been doing for the last eight, nine years, it's helped a lot of people, but it's almost like a, a bandage. You know, I'm helping guys, okay, well, get more confident and say this, believe in yourself. You know, um, you know, I am helping, but man, yeah. it's, if you could strip away all that childhood bullshit, it puts people in so much better of a situation to do anything else in life afterwards, including meet women or have connections with other people or whatever. So, yeah, I was just blown away by, by the, the, the profoundness, if that's the word, of, of the work, really. Yes, really. yes. You know, I mean, you know, the way I offer that work now, you could also say, you know, it's a combination of all the teachings I have ever, you know, experienced in my life. And also, you know, whatever I offer in these uh, retreats, I have done it with myself many, many times in the first place. So in that way, you know, um, I think it became a very authentic piece of work, you know, and it's a little bit like I have put all my wisdom and all my experience into this piece of work. And I love to, you know, design structures and exercises. I love to do that. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Let's put the phones on silent, shall we? It is on silence, is actually. It? It oh, no, it might computer. be your computer. That was it your was computer. It was my computer. Yeah, yeah. No yes, worries. yes. No worries. These yes. things happen. Right. That's what That's what post-editing is for. All the bad things will just be removed. It's fine. <laughs> um, what was my... Another thing I wanted to I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. Something that, that you said that really struck me, and I, I never forgot it, and, and when people ask me about the course, I sort of give them this little piece just so they kind of get a little taste of what, what what's going yes. on. And it's the fact that... There's a couple of things, but that we're so... Um, dependent on our parents, even when, even when they're good parents, 
it fucks us over because as a child, we just want freedom. So if we know mommy is yes. good and mommy yes. says, oh, you can't do this and this and it restricts our freedom. Well, we think, well, mommy must be yes. right because she's so good. Yes. I must be bad. Me wanting exactly. freedom must be bad. Isn't and, that amazing? And that blew my mind. I was like, yes. holy fuck. Yes. So you're screwed if your parents are bad or good. You're fucked anyway. Yes, yes. You know, as I say, the, the, the good parents are even more dangerous. Yeah. Because then, uh -huh. you know, whenever you want something different than they want, you feel guilty. For being different and having, you know, different opinions about things. So either way, you know, conditioning is conditioning, good or bad. At the end of the day, you know, you have to find out who you really are behind all this conditioning, because you know, it's it's so clear. It's something like a makeup we 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 wear. You know, let's say if you would have been raised in China to Chinese parents, you would have a total different set of you know, belief systems and personalities. But still, again, it's the personality. And, you know, as I was very lucky to work with um, so people from so many different nations and countries and backgrounds, you know, it became so clear to me that, you know, behind that, that set personality, you know, doesn't matter if you are American, if you're Chinese, if you're Australian, if you're German, and so on, you know, we all long for the same stuff. This is basically to be loved and have a sense of belonging. Mm. And even, you know, all these neuroscientists, they can even prove that with all their brain scans. This is what basically you need is the sense to belong and feel loved. And behind the personality, once people let down their defenses, you know, this is actually what's left. And then people actually love each other oh, and it, don't it, hate each other. They actually absolutely. love each other. Absolutely. Remember, but I mean, just like in this last retreat, you know, you were in, I mean, there was such a love in the room. And each time it even gives me no goosebumps. It, just it's, to un, it's, about. it's unbelievable. I, even by the end of the course, I, I almost was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm not going to see most of these people again in my life. I love them all. They're so amazing. I was like getting sad at how much I loved all the people and I'm not yes, going to see them. Yes. It's true. I was like, oh my God. Um, but here's it the, here, a little bit like the family. Oh, it was. Had, it, right? it was. It was exactly that. And I and I do hope yeah. I, I see some of them again. But, you know, I just want to say, uh, I just agree so much with what you're saying. It seems like. Um, like this whole podcast, it's called the Woke as Fuck podcast because I want to wake people up from the dream, wake people up out of the matrix that society is. And, and you know, this matrix doesn't want us to love. It doesn't want us to feel. This is why we're encouraged to drink and smoke, watch movies, you know, don't, don't do anything spiritual. Just, just work, pay your taxes, do what you're told, don't ask too many questions. And of course there's no love in society. Everybody's just struggling to survive. You know, can you imagine what society would be like if everybody did this work, if everybody felt and was authentic and loved each other? You couldn't get anyone to go to war. You couldn't get anyone to hurt another person. No, you know, the, you can say goodbye to the military industrial complex. It wouldn't exist. You know, so this is why they don't want us doing this work. They don't want us feeling. They don't want us loving. So that that's why what you're doing is really counterculture still. It's really, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I think if the government really knew what you were doing, they, they'd want to shut you down. If, yes, you know? I mean, I mean, you know, as I always say, when you look around, all the violence going on, you know, like child abuse, domestic violence, all these people, they come from parents, you know, they all basically come from being conditioned by parents, by society, by religion, you know, so in that way, that's why I also left at the kind of traditional psychotherapy where, you know, you just take a dysfunction of a person and then try you then you try to put it back into a function again. But then you basically dismiss the people back to dysfunctional families or background. I mean, big deal, right? Yeah, I mean. It's a... So in that way, you know, it's not enough just to basically put the dysfunction into a function. But you also want to create, a, you know, a healthy environment where you live with your friends and your work, you know, that it's soulful in a sense. Can you, can you imagine if kids were, were, you know, kids and their parents were all going through this, you know, like you have a kid and the kid is like, you know, eight, seven or eight, and then boom, you, you got to do the course. Everyone does the course. Yes. I mean, wow. Yes, wow. yes, 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 yes. That would be so helpful. You know, I remember I once had um, basically a mother and her daughter in the course and uh 
it was so amazing to watch. I mean, independently, they had to go through their own process there, but it created such a connection between the two of them. I mean, in the end, they were lying in each other's arms, crying and crying and crying and just basically telling how much they love each other. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it, it, it's so profound. And it's, it's funny because for years and years before I met you or knew any of this stuff here, I would always be talking about guys, you know, you have to wake up from the conditioning from society, all, all this brainwashing, yes. you have to work, pay taxes, yes. save up for yes. your retirement, fucking bullshit. And then, you know, and I, and I was very aware of what's in the media, the government's the educational system, extremely toxic. It's all just about creating slaves, essentially. But I didn't realize how that this all of this has to start with your childhood. This is the this is you have to would you say that you have to deal with the childhood stuff first before you deal with all the rest? Yes, I would say so. Because in a way, you know, if your relationships are not working, if you can't find, you know, the love you work, the, the work you love, you know, you must basically go back to where that all started. So you have to come in terms of your childhood pain, yeah. you know, and... Um, Most people just ignore it. They just shovel it under a rock and they try and move on and they just don't think yeah, about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, they believe, you know, leave the past in the past, but that is the biggest illusion ever, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, there is this saying, time is a healer. In, in primary therapy, we say, no, this is not true. Because all these, you know, painful, traumatic experiences some of us actually experienced, you know, it's actually stored in a part of your brain, the feeling brain, the limbic system, who doesn't even have a sense of time, right? That means whenever you are triggered in one of these old wounds, yeah, basically you experience it as if it is happening now. Mm -hmm. so in that sense time is not a healer but you have to do basically the work right it's 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 funny because you know if you cut your arm or whatever or you break your hand time is a healer and then and we so we apply that logic because you know if you break your hand six weeks later you're okay so we kind of apply that to emotional pain but it's not the same no it's not the same yeah it's clearly not the same as i said you know like the 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 past it shows in you know in the choice of your relationships you know in, in your work and your unhappiness in the pain and the shame you feel about yourself right you know and it, it's funny i read a book i talk about sometimes recently called um uh ritual by a african shaman called maladoma some yes that, have you heard I of heard him about, yes, oh. yes 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 oh wow yes. Yeah, I mean, have you that when they do something wrong basically they don't get punished but they just get basically laughed by the whole tribe yeah, that, I think that's part of it. Um, but I, I was I was just going to point out that, um, you know, so many books that are written talk about how in the old days and still today in some places, you know, you don't grow up. Your mother and father don't even take care of you. And this book talks about, you know, your grandfather would raise the, the, the kid because the grandfather has the wisdom and the tribe has the wisdom. So you're actually yes. with the tribe yes. and you have many yes. men to take example from and many women. And so you get this variety of, uh, of of inputs for, you know, what's it like to be a man or a woman and, and what life is. So it doesn't matter if, if your physical, you know, the father or mother is really traumatized. It might it won't affect you very much because you've got the whole tribe. And that's so much more natural to grow yes. up in that environment than what we have now, which is like, okay, these people happen to be your, you know, this guy gave you the sperm, this, this woman gave the egg. Okay, they're responsible for you now. But maybe they don't have any fucking idea how to how to be parents. And then what? You're fucked. Right. There's right. no society. I mean, There's no support group. I mean, just to drive a car, you need a license, right? Yeah. But to be a parent, basically, and put a child into the world, you don't need any, you know, uh, qualifications, so to speak. That's crazy. It's crazy. Right? It's crazy. And it's weird. I feel even weird thinking about it because I'm totally pro-freedom. Pro like, I believe everyone should be able to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't fuck up other people. But here, when it comes to children, you are fucking up other people if you're not qualified. So I'm starting to think people should take your course and get a license before they have kids. <laughs> That's what I think. In a way. But, you know, you can never force somebody, you know, to put them, put them on the path of self-realization and healing. It has to come from the person, you know. It's, you can basically, you know, you can, uh, you know, be an example for people how it feels like, you know, once you work through the main parts of your childhood, but in a, at the end of the day, you can never force anybody to do that, you know. It's a little bit like... Um, you are a seeker or you're not, right? I would put it like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's that's a whole you know, bunch of... 
you need to have that longing kind of wanting to break free you know and experience freedom and love in your life yeah absolutely absolutely so you know for me like um i think i have been a seeker my whole life it's somehow ever since i can remember but actually you know i think all children in a way are spiritual because they're so still full of wonder and they are spontaneous and live totally in the now you know and um you know, for me personally, like uh, in my early childhood, you know, when my most beloved brother died through an accident, I was really left with very existential questions like, you know, is there life after death? Am I going to meet him again? You know, what and who is God? And can, you know, can I trust into higher power? You know, I felt like if this higher power or God puts me for such a painful experience, you know, what is that all about? So in a way that I think set the stage for me for my spiritual journey. And then, um, then basically uh, later again, you know, uh, when I was um, studying psychology, you know, and I was introduced to meditation, that's, you know, when my longing to find love and freedom became very, very strong. So um, in that way, you know, I have been on the spiritual path, as I said, since I remember. And, you know, I think it's also important to know to put yourself on a spiritual path, you know, um, it's often at times very difficult and uh, often very painful, you know, and, um, because, you know, the difficult part is basically, you know, to give up this formed identity, you know, the ego. And uh, so at times, you know, it can be very heart rendering and it needs lots of discipline and vulnerability and actually humility, you know, because sometimes, you know, things get worse before they get better. And um, in that way, you know, maybe it is not for everybody right as i said before you need to be you know you need to want that to expose yourself to such an extent but um you know as this really wonderful person mystic Rumi, you must have heard of mm -hmm. him yeah mm -hmm. he says basically you know the wound is where the light enters you so in that way you know it's ever so rewarding to um you know let yourself feel all the pain there is inside. And, you know, in my experience, then it becomes, you know, I have become myself so much more relaxed and, you know, I'm more present. And, you know, at times my mind becomes very quiet and, you know, and I feel just like so more grounded in life. And um, so in that way, you know, I'm very grateful to, you know, to the way I live my life. And, uh, you know, I find myself ever so often basically to saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't even know to whom I'm saying it and saying it to existence, to God, however you want to call it, you know. I mean, just the fact to have a body, to have a body, you know, this is such an amazing instrument, you know, to experience life through the senses, for example, you know. And, um, in that way, I'm very, very grateful, you know, and uh, also don't take it for granted to be able to, you know, work with people in the way I work with them. I'm just very grateful about, you know, having found my life's purpose, you could say. Yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh, because this it. is, you know, I find, you know, I believe that, you know, behind all this set personality, once you get in touch with your essence, with your core, you know, each person is unique and has different merits. And then you need to bring these merits into a form. And then it doesn't matter if you are a lawyer, a therapist, a baker, a shoemaker, or whatever, you know, you just then need to align it with who you are. And I think on the long run, that's the only way, you know, what makes you happy in your work that it's actually aligned with who you are and not a job you just do out for survival, you know? Let's say if you would give me now a million dollars, I would still do what I do. I wouldn't stop. 
I wouldn't change a thing, you know? And how often you hear people, you know, oh God, if I would have a million dollars, I would immediately quit my nine to five job, right? I wouldn't. I would still do the same. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what this all comes down to. And I think everything I've been doing for years, it, it all comes down to being true to yourself. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is the, the big struggle everybody has with this, again, the system that's been created where you need money and you need all these things. It's all, you know, it's a very, very yes, sneaky yes. system. But as I said, it's not an easy journey, you know? Mm. Yes, but I don't believe, you know, that you have to do your job only out of survival. If people tell me, well, you know, if I would have enough money, I would change my job. Usually it's not because of they don't have enough money. Usually, you know, what it then comes down to that people just have beliefs of not being able to do what they want, you know, or right. that somehow inside they don't give themselves the permission to do what they want because mommy and daddy are in the way, right? Yeah, I mean, we make up so many reasons to disallow ourselves from being happy, but they're all they're all bullshit. Yes. They're all bullshit. Yes. Everyone can be yes. happy, for sure. Yes, but it's not a walk in the park. No. Basically, you know, you have to be very, very committed to your search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Your yes. mic sometimes just um, rubs up against your shirt, I guess, and it makes a little crinkling sound, which is oh, a little bit annoying. Okay. If, okay. if, if okay. we can fix that, that would be great. Yes. I won't move an inch. <laughs> well, you're you're German, so, you know, that's uh, what you guys are famous for in the bedroom, right? <laughs> not, not, move, not moving. For being stiff, that's you right. want to say. That's right. right. I'm surprised you moved at all during the entire interview. <laughs> yeah. I move all the time. <laughs> well, because you're not very German in many ways. <laughs> well, yes, I have to be deconditioned, you could say, right? Yeah, no shit. I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to ask you, uh, what was your... Uh, you know, what was your damage from your parents? And what was it like working through that before you were, you know, early, yes. early on for yourself? Yes. Well, you know, I mean, for sure, that death of my brother, you know, that kind of uh, shaped me a lot. And also my family, because in a way, you know, there wasn't much space for all of us to grieve. In a way, you know, if something like that happens, I think the whole family would need to go to therapy in order to cope with that pain and integrate it and feel it. And, you know, of course, I grew up, you know, with German parents, you know. I'm born uh, 59, so it was still, you know, uh, a time, basically, it just... 15 years after the end of the war, you know, and uh, of course I had quite an authoritarian father, which I was kind of always rebelling against, you know, already at a very young age. And, um, you know, I, I, during my own therapy, I had to work a lot of my own anger towards the parents, you know, for... Uh, you know, my, my father was a very successful businessman and, uh, you know, working all the time. And then just, you know, when he would come home, everybody had to adjust to what he wanted, what created incredible anger in me, right? So, you know, I mean, we all conditioned. That's what it comes down to. Yep. Yeah. That's the, you know, uh, but I just was very rebellious and it was already that, you know, it was also that time window at that time, you know, then in the 70s and 80s, you know, that you would rebel against the parents, right? Because you just wanted uh, a different life than they lived, right? That's why I was also happy, you know, that already as a very young woman, you know, I could leave Germany and live in, in India for so many years. Right. That was quite liberating for me. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can imagine. Um, yeah, I, I had already started realizing uh, many things before the course, but it, after it just seemed so apparent that it, you know that both my mom and, and dad had tremendous amounts of pain. They were from you know they yes. came from Soviet yes. Union, and yes. uh, you know my my mother's uh, father died when she was ten years old. She never recovered yes. from that. Exactly. She never recovered. But you always felt that, you know. You felt her pain because you're so bonded and so connected with mother. So you must have felt her pain and the way she dealt with it. Yeah, well, she dealt with it by taking it out on me. <laughs> so I definitely but, felt yes. it. Yeah, but isn't that painful? 
Yeah, you know? for sure. That's why I'm saying, you know, the only way basically to stop this and not passing it on to your own children, you have to work it through in, in you, you know, you have to come in terms with your past. It's the only way to stop it. Otherwise, you just basically, you know, you just project your unexpressed pain on other people all the time. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And I think people, after they sort of listen to this, they'll become much more aware of people walking around that they just used to think were assholes. They'll start looking at those assholes in a totally different way. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. And that's what I'm saying. Then once people allow themselves, you know, to to feel their, their, their unresolved pain, you know, you, you open up to them and they just, you know, you, you feel connected with them and they actually become beautiful beneath all this irritating, you know, defense mechanism. Absolutely. And I, I can imagine people sitting there and thinking, okay, this is all this is all very well and good, but what can what can I do to, to start this process? Is there something I should read? Is there some exercise I could do just, just to start connecting with that with that, you know, that deep pain? Um of course, you know, there is a lot of liter literature around primary therapy and inner child work. You know, personally, I like, you know, uh, basically all the books of uh, Dr. Arthur Yanov, who was the founder of primary therapy. And then later, you know, uh, more in the inner child direction, there is a guy called uh, John Bradshaw. I also trained with him in the U.S., and there you can already, you know, you find already many exercises you could do on your own. And, you know, just to read about how basically um, our unprocessed pain, you know, kind of contaminates our adult life. Already that gives you so much understanding. And then you can kind of already start pinpointing it back to yourself. But in a way to, you know, as this is deep, deep, deep work, you know, I would always recommend to find a therapist and then really, you know, work through that stuff. It's difficult to do it on your own. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're not recommending any particular therapist. I mean, you're just any primal therapist in the world is perfectly capable. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, well, you know, like. If you want to work with me, I'm I'm very much known for tough love. So I'm not going to put sugar on shit. <laughs> if you want more, you know, spirituality or therapy light, then I'm not the right person to work with. Yeah, I can I can attest to that for sure. So, <laughs> you got the experience of that. You know, I don't believe in all this new age, age methods. You know, I just, you know. Uh, repeat the affirmation I'm wonderful and I'm a beautiful being and then you know I'm fine <laughs> it's it takes a bit more than that yeah I remember that's that's one of the things you you said and it really struck a chord with me I'm trying to remember how exactly you phrased it but it was basically saying um you know uh, you have to feel the fucking you have to feel the pain yes. it's not gonna it's not gonna be you were making fun of yes. you know these ideas that you can just sort of yes yes you know yeah, you know, just, it's like the, the the feeling is the healing, I always say. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, so if you already just take that from that podcast, that would be already a lot, you know, that the feeling is the healing, but you also, you know, you can't feel, uh, you can't heal what you can't feel. Okay. So in that way, you know, uh, you need somebody who reflects your blind spots. To you because you know like the nature of our ego defenses and our blind spots you know uh it's difficult to see them yourself you know you need the reflection like in a mirror you know somebody who reflects it back to you basically uh, another because, thing you know, pop, pop, yeah. popped in my head that's so, so crucial is that society oh no sorry if i interrupted you um, society doesn't want us to cry, especially as men. We're trained, oh, you're a pussy, you know, you know, we're man, man up. You know, there's an expression we have in the English world. I don't know if you have it in Germany. Yeah. Man up, be a man, you know. Yes. So, so you yes. know, you get beaten up if you show any emotion. And it's like it's like the most unhealthy thing there is. You have to fucking cry and let that shit out or it's going to destroy okay. your life. Exactly. It's literally going to ruin your exactly. life. Exactly. It's horrible. Totally. I totally so I'm, I'm going to do a video called Be a Man. 
cry regularly you know <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna put that out there yeah because it's yes. true you have to no and also through crying you release all these stress hormones you know and already for that you need it to come back to a more balanced sense yeah i mean this, well this is what society does it just puts people on this medication you're unhappy take these pills we'll dull the pain take and you pills. take exactly. the pills it's exactly. unbelievable and you, you don't know, feel anything Yes, and in, in, in prime therapy or in the way I kind of offer it, basically, you know, you don't tranquilize people. Of course, you know, if you suffer of a very severe uh, personality disorder, then that needs something else, yeah, different. But, you know, again, like for the normal neurotic, and you want to allow that person, you know, that all this repressed stuff comes up you know, and give them a space basically to release it and feel it, you know. And then once you, you touch bottom of any of these, you know, uh, repressed feelings, if you really fully, fully, fully allow yourself to feel it, you know, you touch bottom. And by touching bottom, you're much closer again, you know, to that what we call the essence or, you know, your core. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a core most people never even connect with. Yes. And that's that's yes. what's scary. We don't even we don't even connect with ourselves or even feel what's in there. And some people go their entire lives, you know, I could I could say my father, he hasn't he still hasn't done any work. Nothing. He's you know, 70 something. He hasn't yes. done any work. He's still the only we've ne we've only had one real conversation ever for 5 minutes about why he ran away from my from my mom. And the rest right. of the time, he's in his pain body making jokes all the time and being silly because it's the only way he can... That's it. That's his way of that's functioning. That's learned it. Yeah! Yes. See? Here we go. <laughs> yes. Yes. So in a way, you know, you are in a much better place, you know, you can work on all that. Also, I believe, you know, every person in a way, you know, uh, uh, has an opportunity also, you know, to, to heal themselves. Again, you know, it's a decision also, you know, if you have that longing, you know, wanting to break free and that you have that longing that there is something more to it. That's what it actually comes down to. Right. You know, and um, so in a way, um, you know, I just feel now with my parents, they're still alive. They're very, very old, you know. Um, you know, I feel very... I feel lots of compassion for them. And in a way, you know, they had been so hurt themselves. So, and by me working for all my, you know, um, my childhood wounds, basically what's left now when I meet them is just the love. You know, I'm, 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 you know, of course they irritate me, but <laughs> at times, you know, but it's well, they're German. It's, no, no, no. It's just like parents do irritate you. Family just does irritate you at times. But, you know, still what's left is the love and uh, connection, you know. And I just, you know, see myself again very fortunate that I was able basically, you know, to put myself on that path. And they just choose a different way of living, which is fine too, you know. But again, you know... Um, as Freud says, you know, all these unexpressed emotions, you know, they never die in a person, you know. They just basically, they are buried alive and then, in a way, it will come out later in much uglier ways, right? So, guys, work on your childhood stuff. There is, in a way, no, no way around. Yeah. Because then, in the end, you know... Um, uh, you know, in the end, I say, you know, I always ask people, now tell me, you know, now that you basically work through your childhood issue, what is your plan now to do with this one wild and precious life given to you by your parents, you know? That's what you then want to focus on. Yeah, yeah, it seems like, uh, well, for me, it almost feels like, you know, life is only beginning now after I've done some of this work and opened up. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. But again, it's only through these two people that life was given to you in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's also, then, it, it also becomes... You know what that, sorry. No, no, um, I was just going to say, that it just becomes, once you recognize that the parents are also damaged and you, you clean up your own shit, you can sort yes. of finally, you know, maybe just love them 
and accept that they're fucked up because you understand that you got it from them and they just got it from their parents and in a way it's not their fault they're just the same as everybody else you know yes yes you know and by you working through your uh, stuff you know then maybe for the first time you can see them for who they are you know and you don't project all your you know all your resentful feelings of anger and rage and you know you don't project it on them anymore or any longer. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, I feel, I feel like yes. we've, we've been quite on a little emotional uh, roller coaster yeah. ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. Maybe just give yourself a little inner hug <laughs> at this point. I will. Point. I'll do it right now. Yes. 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 Do it. Do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Exciting news that uh, you, my dear, are going to be coming and uh, speaking at the Infinite Man Summit, May yes. 26, 28th in Sofia, Bulgaria. 2017 is the year, and uh, I'm super stoked to see what's going to happen because I've, I've, you know, I've taken your course, but I've never seen you just get up and do a talk. What do you, what, what's going to happen, Pooja? Yes, I mean, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Can't wait to teach. Basically, you know, um, how many hours we have there? Uh, well, the the event, the event is going to be three days, but you could do an hour, and if you wanted, you could speak for an hour and a half if you if you have the content for it. Well, I can do even three hours if you want me to do that. Well, we'll have to talk about that <laughs> after. Yes, yes, yes. You know, basically, um, I will guide people like on a journey, which of course always starts to look at your life in the present, but then, you know, you want to, it leads kind of step by step back to childhood experience. So um, just to make people understand, you know, like the, 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 the parental and, the, you know, the environmental conditioning they received in the past. So um, basically, they will get a, basically they will get a clear experience of how it feels to let down at least some of the defenses, you know, and and their masks. So uh, and get more an experience of you know of the authentic self in a way. And I you know I can use basically guided visualization with that, you know, sharing some you know exercise which include emotional and physical expression yeah so i would say you know expect an emotional and physical mental and spiritual reboot Amazing. if you are interested I... you know in sensing your unexpressed basically emotions from childhood which do hold you back i cannot wait to see the reaction yes. <laughs> Yes. Give, me the three guys. Hours. give me three hours okay do three hours honestly yes. i can't i can't yes. wait i mean we're just yes. used to speakers wanting to do an hour hour and a half but if you i, I realize you have so much to offer and there's so much because you're yes. going to be again doing something not just speaking you know there's there's an extra exactly. yes exactly. you know it's not just like a, a mental or intellectual experience i already want to guide people in a little bit experimental experience basically yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be profound. I mean, the last event was profound, and you weren't there. I can only imagine what this is gonna be like <laughs> with you there. Yeah, should we should we should we blow their reality apart right on the first day so that we open them up and then they'll they'll feel more the whole the whole weekend? That seems like a good idea. Well, we talk about that. We talk about that <laughs> behind the scene. Amazing, amazing. So tell people if they want to find you. I know you do you do one on one coaching. You have workshops all around the world. Tell people uh, a little bit about you know how they can get in touch with you if they want to work with you. Yes, I mean, first of all, they can check my website, www.puchalabs, this is P-U-J-A-L-E-P-P.com. There you already find, you know, lots of information, articles about prime therapy. You find my schedule. I offer my work, you know, worldwide. So through retreats, but also through one-on-one -on -one coaching, and then of course worldwide, also through Skype individual sessions. So wherever you are in the world, you know, there's no excuse not to start, basically. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think it's kind of implied, but uh, anybody listening to this right now that 
needs to do this work. Go do the work with Pooja. Sign up to the next course. Here's what I did. As soon as I came out of the course, I called uh, yes. Isabel, my main pig, and I was like, yes. this was amazing, blah, blah, blah. You're doing the next one. And she literally the other day, I just said, even though we're only going to be together now, maybe three weeks after having some separate time, I said, I don't care. You're going straight to Copenhagen. You're doing the first one that's available, <laughs> and then and then yes. I'll see you afterwards. Well, did she sign up she, then? She applied. She's waiting for them to... Very you know, good. To get back. Very good. You will love her even more when she comes oh, up. I know. I know. I mean, she's. And she's... then it's so amazing, you know, she goes through basically the same retreat, and then you can really share from a totally new place with each other. Absolutely. It's going to be very exciting. Absolutely. I, I, I can't wait. I, I was tempted to go and redo it, but I feel like I'm, I'm good and I'm working on myself in other ways, and I, I don't feel that. But if there's a t part of me is like, go and do it again. But I think I, I, think yes. I, might, I might at some point, but now I'm, it's I'm doing great. It's great to review it at some point, you know? As I said, you know, it's a long road towards hey, healing. I, I'm I'm waiting for your advanced course, and then me and her can do it with you yes, when that comes yes. out. I'm on the it's put me on the waiting actually, list right now. It will be on by October, and basically already negotiating with a place, you know, where okay. we're going to offer it. Amazing. It will be most probably in Mallorca, Spain. Okay, I'm down. You've got two signups already. That's it. Okay, I already got many many signups. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. It Next is going. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't wait. Enough. Pooja, from the bottom of my now much more feeling heart, thank you so much for yeah. coming and spending yeah. some time with me. Thank you for having me on this podcast. Really appreciate it. And I'm just so looking forward to, to seeing you at the event and, and, and uh, hearing what you're going to do for Isabel and then seeing you again for the advanced course. I'm, I'm super stoked. You, you really have changed my life and I, I, you really have my, my gratitude for that. Well, as I said, you know, I feel very fortunate to be able to make a difference in people's life. You know, I never take it for granted. You know, that's what I mean. All I say, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And well, I think that's the key, gratefulness. Yep, and I'm I'm feeling a lot more of that in my life. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, yes, because yeah. I think you know, if we are not grateful for what we have, it will be taken away from us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, that's it. I will let yes. you go back to your German reality. <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm just basically waiting for my new client now. <laughs> Next oh. client. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much and uh, see yeah, you in the next one. Thank you for having me. Many kisses. And I'm really looking forward to see you again. Yeah, me too. Yes, yes. Keep okay. up the good work. Yeah. Oh, I shall. You as well. Yes. Yes, I will. No okay. doubt. Nobody can stop us, right? No. Well, once you, no, that's the no, thing. No. Once you start, there's no going back, you know? Exactly. Exactly. There's no way back. No. And I think I'm going to do this until I take my last breath. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a guy, there's a guy actually who might uh, come speak at one of our events in the future called Leonard Orr. And he's, but oh, is, do you know I Leonard? Him. I started with him like Are you like, serious? Reversing. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was maybe yes. going to come speak, but he just couldn't make those dates. But he wants oh me God. to come and he's do some. He's still alive. He wants me to come do a training with him in April in Germany, actually. Yes, yeah. I also did in Germany. It's more than 30 years ago, actually. Reversing. Reversing. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it in April in, in near, near Cologne. Yes. Birth is life. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. So, um, so what I was gonna say is he he's a practicing immortalist, and there's many people out there who I know actually you can stop aging, you can stop aging completely and stay in the human body. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. really want to do it, yeah. if your will yes. is really there, yeah. it, there are practices, and I can actually send you a couple of links that I know these things <laughs> work. Really, I mean, I'm not even kidding. There's there's people on this planet who are a thousand plus years old, and I know I know it for a fact. Okay. So that's another conversation. <laughs> it would be another conversation, exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, um, darling. So, yes, talk soon. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.